Hello, this is Dave Borton from Minneapolis. Our buddy Joe Morocco is off sourcing coffee someplace. Where is he, Adrian? Uh, Missouri. Missouri. He's known for very high grown coffee. Robusta. He likes Robusta. And so today we've got uh, Adrian from Cafe Imports and David from Clada Coffee here in um, St. Paul. Two shops, one on uh, West 7th and one now on Selby. Um, I'd like to introduce Eve, each of them. Adrian is uh, our sales rep at Cafe Imports and does a phenomenal job of putting good coffees on us. And so I'd like to thank her for that. David, uh, I've been shopping and uh, uh, for coffees in their shop probably for two and a half, three years. I've never had a bad coffee and I've never had a bad experience in terms of customer service. So Mary does a super job in hiring down there and I appreciate that. Uh, they spoil me. Great Cortado. <laughs> so Adrian, how'd you get into coffee and what in holds you there? Yeah, I got into coffee um, when I was in high school. My friends and I used to hang out at a shop that's no longer open in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Um, and it was just a place where we hung out. So I thought, I'm going to get a job there. I need some money. And I worked there. Um, and then I moved over to another cafe in Sheboygan called Weather Center, um, which is still around. If you're ever in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, great lunch, great coffee. Super. Um, yeah, and just kind of stayed with it, decided that it was a great career, and when Cafe Imports was hiring, I jumped at it. She takes awfully good care of us here. <laughs> the greens that you buy from Mill City Roasters come from her TLC hands, and so <laughs> I appreciate the relationship both with Adrian and Cafe Imports. David, what got you into coffee and what holds you? Yeah, I got into coffee by accident, actually. <laughs> um, I've always been going to coffee shops and love them, um, but I grew up with Mary, the owner of Claudia's Kids, um, and so I'd hang out at her coffee shop, and she had just offered me a job one day, took it, and been here doing I am. It ever since. Yeah, fell in love, so I can't get enough of it. Well, it's good to have you both here substituting for, it took two people to fill the shoes of Joe Morocco. That's, what, that's clear and obvious. What we're going to be doing today are two things. We've got the new 500 gram sample roaster in from North roasters we're going to be roasting on it we've got the coffee of the month the Sulawesi Pongo Pongo I love it it's the coffee of the month full of orange navels it's creamy it's got a little bit of cranberry in it what we're going to do I've pre-roasted that Adrian with her barista background David with his we're going to prep this coffee five different ways for you but first let's roast okay 500 grand sample. Uh, have you roasted? It's been a while since uh, I've roasted. Yeah. <laughs> and David came over last week and helped me roast. So mm -hmm. he's, he's an expert. <laughs> so if I get in the soup, David's going to help me. So I'm using a full 500 gram. Uh, when North says it's a 500 gram roaster, you don't have to back it down and say what's 75% or 80 of that. It'll roast the full 1.1 pound. So this has been preheated. Pre Somebody asked me on the thread, how long do you have to let it warm up? Just by habit, I'd let something warm up for a half an hour for roasting. I'll cut the uh, gas off, let it drift down. Mm -hmm. David, can you hold the mic for me a minute Absolutely. here while I get this started? Okay, we're doing 500 grams. Sulawesi Pongo Pongo. Um, I cut the burners off. It's the way I roast for the first minute. Burners off, okay? Um, I charged at 400 degrees, and at four minutes, at one minute, I'll turn the burner back on, probably to about three and a half, 3.4 inches of water column. Have you cupped the Pongo Pongo this year? I have. Uh, the Sulawesi's are my favorite coffees of the year. Um, actually, it's probably tied with Colombia, but the Sulawesi's are a great coffee for someone who likes 
Indonesian coffees um, and wants to get something that's maybe a little sweeter, a little different than maybe a Sumatra. Um, there's something that I know a lot of people call into Cafe Imports and look forward to every year. And every year, we cannot be more thrilled when they arrive. David, I know you had them last year. Did you have them this year? Yeah, we're, uh, well, I know um, we're going to be getting a couple from Dogwood and I think Bootstrap as well. Um, but yeah, the ones I had last year were phenomenal. Very tomato-based and light. Kind of blew my mind. I didn't know I kind of grouped them with uh, Sumatra, a little earthy and kind of dirty kind of tasting. Um, but I love the, the full flavor that came through with those. Um, so. This one's a very clean cup. Mm -hmm. It's fully washed. Um, I had it last year as well, the Peaberry was just phenomenal and I look forward to having it again this year um, so it's a good one and Dave when you just smelled there what were you smelling for what were you looking for um, in the initial part of the roast, um, I'm just drying it, probably till about five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm after the alfalfa smell. Later on, as we get to the drying, end of drying, I get more of your dried haze. But right now, it's more like the uh, cut alfalfa, cut Timothy. Mm -hmm. And I can see right now I've got one hitchhiker from my last roast. <laughs> and so you're looking for a continuous yellowing of the beans through the drying process? For the first five minutes. Okay. That's what I'm after. I'm trying to make sure that the inside or the core temperature is at the same temperature as the outside. Mm -hmm. So I'm keeping it um, low temp for the first uh, minute and then giving it uh, as high BTU as I'm going to uh, for the whole roast. We're at uh, three and a half minutes in and the bean temp is 200. And I'm working entirely in Fahrenheit. Adrian, when was the last time you roasted? What, why were you roasting? Uh, I went out in August to Roasters Guild Retreat, um, which was held in Wisconsin this year. So it was really nice and close. Um, and I was roasting to learn a bit more. Um, I roasted maybe four years ago for Dumb Brothers for a little bit. Um, so I wanted to sharpen up those skills and learn what other people were doing, what some of the trends amongst roasters from all over the country, um, all over the world really, what they were doing. And uh, I got to play on, I think about 12 different roasters. So a lot of learning. Very good. Mm -hmm. Adrian mentioned Dunn Brothers. Dunn Brothers is a Midwest chain. And one of their claims to fame is they roast in all their shops. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see them roasting um, uh, in their shops. David, have you ever roasted with Micah? No, I from haven't. Bootstrap. I actually, um, Micah is the uh, owner of Bootstrap Coffee in St. Paul here. Um, and he's been open for a little over a year now. And he roasts all of his own coffee um, and is one of our wholesale partners. Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, I've actually been meaning to roast with him uh, soon here. Um, but he's awesome. He sets up a lot of resources for the cafes he works with. So um, a lot of barista training. He's got a lot of knowledge himself and awesome guy. Very good. We're at uh, five minutes into the roast. And so what I'm looking for here is complete yellow. And you can see this still has green hues. Mm -hmm. One of the concerns people had was about pulling out the trier and there I probably had it out for eight nine seconds and the roast dropped two degrees and went right back up so the use of your trier 
in my opinion. One roaster's opinion is critical. Stay on that trier. So how many batches have you roasted with the uh, with this new roaster? I'm up to about 13. Okay. Uh, still learning. Uh, every machine has its own personality. Um, I love it. It's given me good results. Um, what I'm looking for when I do a, a roast on a commercial one is an evenness in the roast. Mm -hmm. I want that bean evenly developed um, in its agitation or its tumbling and then the applications of the BTU. So earlier when you said you were looking for yellow and it was still pretty green, is there any adjustments that you would make to what you're doing to maybe speed it up or? Well, I could if I was behind in the roast, but I'm not. Is mm -hmm. there you can see where we've achieved full yellow. Mm -hmm. And so one of my goals um, is to hit uh, first crack between eight and 10 minutes. I've been doing this and been getting first crack uh, about nine and a half minutes. So um, this appears to be on course. I'm going to leave the gas alone. And it looks like you're making some adjustments right now. What are you It's the doing air again? ventilation. This is the pre-production model. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a wood collar for uh, adjusting the air. On the production model, there's going to be the same fan that there is on the uh, 1K um, that we roast on, where it's got um, a fan where you can set it all the way from 0 to 100 and adjust, uh, adjust it with a mounted fan. And what are you checking for on the grass here? Well, what I'm looking for is um, um, the bean temp. I want a consistently rising bean temp. Uh, what I'm trying to achieve is first crack between 8 and 10 minutes. We are at 9.40 and we've got first crack. I'm just uh, putting the mic over there. First crack is very clear, very obvious. Um, though there's uh, the motor tumbling the drum, uh, though the fan is going on, it's very clear and resolute, uh, the first crack. And I've turned the gas down uh, by 20%. So what I'm looking for is make sure the seams are open, 
How far along are we in first crack? Very even, the trier holds 2.2 grams. Very sweet, uh, almost, uh, well, the florals are almost perfumey. Oh, yeah. Mm. And then what I do is use a wooden spoon, and I'm just using that hand agitation. There's a very powerful fan under here, independent of the chaff filter fan, and that helps cool it quickly. Um, even development of the bean, full city roast. Um, we're gonna let that cool, and we're gonna walk over and begin prepping this coffee that I roasted last Friday. Very good, five preps of the same Sulawesi Pongo Pongo. Um, Adrian has uh, barista experience in a couple of places. David here at Clada's Coffee. Um, I'm gonna let them do the heavy lifting. I'm gonna do the easy work with the uh, Espro. Um, so Adrian, it's all yours to start with a press pot. All right, so the press pot, also known as French press or cafetier, um, I think is one of the most accessible ways to brew a coffee manually, so without a machine or an auto drip. Um, and it's one that you don't need a lot of equipment for. Um, so basically, at its basic, you just need the grounds. Um, I measured out 53 grams. You could also do about eight tablespoons, um, and that's for the eight cup Bodum French press. Um, you'll just fill the water to the pretty much the top um, of this silver rim here. And uh, you don't really need to weigh it out. You certainly can um, if you want to get into weighing out and a little more science of it. Um, but I'm going to do it real easy just as I taught my mom how to use it at home and how I would do it at home. How does she do? Is she doing a good job? Uh, she does. I think she does the <laughs> tablespoons and that makes it easy for her instead of me sure. saying you need so many grams. Keep it simple. <laughs> Keep it simple. Um, so yeah, so I have 53 grams of this Sulawesi that I'm just going to put into the bottom. I've already um, preheated this French press um, earlier, so it should be warm. All right, so I got that in. You want to make sure the grounds are pretty even here. I am just setting up my timer so that I can time this out. 
All right, so you're gonna fill it up about halfway for the bloom, let it rest for a minute, and then we're gonna stir it. Um, and you wanna make sure that you are getting all of the grounds wet. So I'm just gonna pull it a little closer to me, make sure that I saturate everything in here. Like I said, about halfway. Um, doesn't have to be exact. And I'm just gonna let that sit until about one minute. Um, one of the reasons why I really like the French press, other than it being very easy, it's very reliable. I know I'm gonna, what the coffee is gonna taste like. Um, usually has a bit more heavier of a body, has a more robust flavor. So if you want something that tastes strong, as what my mom says, um, this is gonna be great. Uh, she likes the strong flavors. She likes it to kind of be in her face. And also the eight cup one is gonna serve multiple people. So it's kind of a win all around. Full body. Um, and mm -hmm. I like Bodum as well. You get a lot of knockoffs out there, but they're not the quality in terms of the um, screen and the press uh, parameters of it. So if you're gonna go this route, Bodum is the route to go, mm -hmm. in my humble opinion. All right, so I just stirred that and I'm gonna put this down um, I'm not going to push all the way, I'm just going to push before I hit the water. And I'm going to let this rest in another three minutes, so about four minutes. So that's the entire mm -hmm. amount of water that you're going to use for that. Um, oh, good point. <laughs> Fill to the top. Thank you, Dave. The stage. Oh, the stage. The stage issue. All right. And that's so why we this, work in pairs. Just going to fill that there. Perfect. And now I'm going to let it set and not worry about it. Um, I did use a wooden paddle, or you can use a wooden spoon, and that's basically just so you don't um, break the glass with a metal spoon. But if you have just a metal spoon, go for it. Just be extra careful. Super, good press. We'll let that steep. <clears throat> then we're gonna come back and we're gonna go after it. One cup for each of us, for each of the five brews. Uh, David, what are you doing over here? Yeah, so I'm going to start with the uh, Hario V60, which is um, our primary method of uh, pour overs at Clotta Coffee. Um, it's one of my favorites. The thing I like about it, um, the filters are nice and thin, so you get um, a lot uh, of the extraction of the flavors. Um, but that can also mean it's a little more tricky to get an even extraction as well. Um, so it's kind of a love-hate relationship. I've had to play around with it quite a bit. Um, what to, temp do you uh, guys use at the shop for... Uh, Water, 209 in your um, towers? Yep, the, so the towers are 209, which means by the time it's in the, um, in the gooseneck kettle and pouring into your coffee, um, it's gonna end up being around uh, 203 to 205. That's the um, temp I use at home mm -hmm. for all of, our, all of my stuff. Uh, and so I've got 29 grams of coffee in there. I'm a huge fan of using weights over volume. Um, and I'm gonna do a 30 second bloom and uh, um, I do twice as much water as there is coffee. So 58 grams of water. Same way I do mine. Mm -hmm. Friend had me over to their house and they had a Bodum press pot and he asked me to make coffee and I asked him where his scale was. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't have a scale. <laughs> I couldn't make coffee because I'm so anal about the amount of coffee mm -hmm. to the weight of my coffee. I couldn't do it. Yeah, no, that's how I am too. Everyone thinks I'm crazy, but yeah, I've got the best <laughs> coffee, so. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to let that sit for about 45 seconds or so. Um, I always kind of play it by uh, the visuals, so I let the gases rise out of the coffee. Um, usually once the water has traveled through and um, it's kind of finished bubbling, I'll start uh, pouring again. Um, and I've used a little bit of a coarser grind size because I like to pulse um, and get more of a, a vigorous flow going. That way um, it keeps the fines from sticking to the bottom of the filter um, and preventing an even extraction. So I'll... The gases David was talking about are CO2 primarily. CO2 is a byproduct of the roasting. And so I roasted this three days ago. I'll typically go after a coffee three to five days after I've roasted it. The higher the ground, the longer I let it set. I've had some Yemens uh, where I'll go after them not until the sixth or the seventh day um, just because they don't really settle down till then. Mm -hmm. Adrian's uh, time is up over here, so she's going to give us the um, press pot. Give it a blue cup, please. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and so I'm going to do about 440 grams of water, um, and I'm kind of looking for a uh, brew time of between 2 minutes and 30 seconds and 3 minutes. Um, that's generally where I get the, uh, the best out of, out of the Hario V60. Talk about the amount of pour time again. Uh, I would say you should be pouring for about uh, the last 30 seconds it'll be draining, so I should be done pouring by about 2 minutes. Hot, hot, hot. It is. So I'll let that finish draining. And I'm a little anal. I like to tap the um, <clears throat> pour over setup, kind of get the coffee bed uh, even so that the last flow is a little more. A um, lot of arguments about the best way to do pour overs. Absolutely. I noticed you didn't stir your grounds at all. Uh, you know, I don't. Um, that's generally what I like to do with the stream uh, actually coming out of the, the kettle. That's why uh, when I do a little bit more of a coarser grind, um, I'm able to pour a little bit faster um, because that increases the extraction. So what that does is that keeps the fines from migrating to the bottom of the filter, clogging it up and ending up with a, a bitter flavor in the coffee. So, so I've ended Super. up with uh, about 2 minutes and 50 seconds on the brew time. So that's right about perfect. Very good. And I'll let you pour those. All right. I'm going to use the Espro, and the Espro is a system that we sell at millcityroasters.com. I like it. This is my Friday afternoon prep. This is sort of like Miller time for me, you know? <laughs> Friday afternoon, it's Espro time for me. I like it. It gives me the oils um, that I get in a press pot but it's not as thick, it's not as muddy, um, it's a cleaner. I wouldn't call it a refined cup, but it's substantial uh, without a lot of fines. I like it. So here are the three sizes that Espro makes. Small, you end up with 10 ounces of coffee. Medium, you end up with 18 ounces of coffee. And the large, you end up with a quart, or if you really push it, very close to a liter of coffee. Um, this one is the medium. I put in 700 grams of water to 45 grams of coffee. So that's what I'm going after. In terms of the grind on this, I go above a medium, but not quite as coarse as, as Adrian did with her press mm -hmm. pot. Same principle. I'm going to pour it. David, you got any water left for me over no. there? I've got, I got a little, little bit in here. here. Perfect. <laughs> this will be fine yes. for blooming, and then I'll take that when it's ready. And so you prefer the Espro over press pot because Absolutely. of the double filtration? Absolutely. Correct? Yeah, let me show you. That's got a double filtration on it, and if I had three hands, I would take this off. <laughs> Just turn? Yep. Right. And you'll see the second filter in here. And so the, uh, the fines don't reach it uh, quite the way that, uh, thank you, mm -hmm. quite the way that it does on a um, press pot. And so I let it bloom for 30 seconds, give it hand agitation. Mm -hmm. We're going to be so buzzed after this is over. <laughs> And Katie, is that I heard it finished over there. We've got four different pots going. Yep. This is where we tell jokes, right? <laughs> I should have come prepared. I would say I can already taste the difference between the the French press and the V60 here. Yeah, the V60 is definitely a little mellower. The the French press you get more oils, which I um, I do really like. It's got to be I've got to be in the right mood. It's kind of like a I have a preferred method for different times of day, but I do like that French press. It brings out mm -hmm. a lot of that uh, that flavor that I'm familiar with from an Indonesian coffee. I'll do a press pot uh, when it's cold out, yeah. and I've got a good book, and I've got the fireplace roaring, and, and I just want to cuddle up with a, uh, a cup, a press pot, 
in Bodum. Bodum mm -hmm. is what I have at home. Well, and the nice thing is too, it's, you know, you can kind of set it and let it go. And I, the one thing that's a challenge for me for pour overs, especially in the morning, is I gotta, I gotta be, I'm doing that the whole yeah. time, you know? With the, the French press, I find I can get the timing right so I can run around for that little couple of minutes and come back and press it and yeah. it stays pretty good. So, um, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. but. Would you like some We've coffee? got the stage hand coming <laughs> on for the press pod. All right. And with the French press, you might find a little bit of grounds in the bottom. And that's, that's OK in your cup. Um, it's just going to change the body a little bit. Might be a little chalky, but uh, you'll hopefully get the first cup. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For the uh, David's Hario, the coffee is more approachable. Um, I can pick it apart more easily in terms of the flavors. I get some caramels in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I nailed that roast. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some caramels in there. Uh, I've got a navel orange in there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get the cranberry that I did on the sample roast, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I do. I do get a lot of that citrus on that that yeah. kind of creamy. Um, yeah, that kind of silky caramel. Mm -hmm. Uh, body with that uh, slightly sweet flavor is really nice. Yeah. Did a good job on the roast. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I think that the cranberry comes through a bit in the aftertaste when you let it sit. It might not be cranberry, but it'll be like tonic a little bit. Yeah. That bitter Very sweet. Very good. Absolutely. Huh? And let's see. I think it's back to Adrian for the yeah. Kalita Wave. So sure. the Kalita Wave is fair in the U.S. Um, it's fairly new. Uh, it really came on the scene when um, Aaron McCarthy used it for the Brewers' Cup back in 2013, um, and he won Worlds doing a pretty intricate routine with two kettles and three Kalita waves, and I'm just going to do one, so <laughs> <laughs> nothing too fancy. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty nice. This one is great for camping. Um, what I have the Kalita wave itself on is the Hario... Um, it's just a decanter, and I really like it. You can just set it on top of a mug, um, but you will need to get special Kalita Wave filters, which are Kalita brand. All right, so I've already pre-wet the filter to help get rid of some of that papery um, filter taste. And we're just turning on the scale and letting it zero out. So I have done 24 grams of coffee. Um, I'm going to end up with about 380 grams of water, so roughly a 1 to 16 ratio. Um, and I am going to do a bloom just like David did, but I'm going to do a 45 second bloom. All right. And one of the reasons that I really like the Kalita is the thinner filter it has really allows the sweetness in the body to come through. Um, it just makes a really, really sweet coffee. It's going to taste totally different. It has a flat bottom, which promotes even extraction. That's something David said that he gets a little concerned about. Mm -hmm. um, so the wave makes it really easy. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to get my timer ready here and hit start as soon as I get the water on. So I'm going to go to about 60 grams of water for the bloom, or as close to as possible, and just let those gases kind of escape. Um, this is a fun time to get to smell the coffee. So yeah, I, see I that really very, like very that. <laughs> I see the uh, filter didn't collapse on you. I've got a Kalita at home. Mm -hmm. I've got the small one, and I struggle to get the filter to retain its shape it invariably collapses on me. Yeah, I have not had a problem with that, but it also might be the, the filter size. Okay. Yeah, she's work, working with the 185, which is the larger of the two. Yeah. I do like the Cleta. I wish I had <clears throat> access to one, but it's, uh, to me it seems like a little bit more approachable uh, V60, I think, a little more consistent, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, similar flavors. Can now you you're talking as a barista or as a cupper? A little bit of both. Okay. I, uh, I think probably the Kalita is my, my first or second favorite way uh, to prepare coffee. Yeah. And I like to do the pulse method. Um, so I do about 25 to 50 grams every 
few seconds um, and then let it rest for about five seconds just to let the water drain so I don't get any overflow here. And Adrian's pouring into the center with about a two inch diameter on her pour. She's staying away from the side of the filter. Yeah, um, and for the Kalita, some people, I do the circles. Um, my husband, he'll do zigzags. Everyone kind of has their own thing they like to do. Um, but you just want to make sure that you are continuing to get that gr the grounds, um, especially because the, it has a flat bottom, so it's going to extract evenly. You're not, you don't have to stick in the center. I went a little over on my weight, but we'll still be okay. Um, and I'm hoping for this to finish in about three and a half minutes. Um, I want to be at my target water weight at about two minutes. So right now I'm at two minutes um, and 16 seconds, so I hit that pretty well. Um, it looks like this might finish a little quickly, um, so I probably could have gone with a finer grind. Um, on the ditting, I went with a six, um, so I probably could have gotten away with about a five and a half or five. Um, this went a little fast, but it should be still sweet, good body. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Um, <laughs> it's interesting how you've got preferences. I've got the three of them lined up over here, and I know my, my favorite so far. What's your favorite one so far? Uh, David's Hario pour over was really nice. Um, for me, it's giving me the ability to get after the coffee and segregate the flavor tastes the oh. best. Mm -hmm. Would mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I, I'm really, I've never had an Espro before. I'm really actually being swooned by the, the flavor profiles I'm getting from that brew method. Mm -hmm. um, it is a slightly different than the press pot, the French press. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, I mean, I really enjoy this. You get a lot of that orange, um, orangey kind of caramelly smell, and it's mm -hmm. good stuff. Very, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. There's not a bad cup in here. <laughs> That's for yeah. sure. It's a good roaster. We are going to be buzzed. Yeah. I can already feel it. <laughs> this reminds me of when we had focus on the roast. Uh, Serena and I had 70 coffees to cup in a week. And we just walked around here flying. And so this takes me back to that same effort. Mm. I do. I really like the flavor profile from the Kalita now as well. I'm a little late to the game, but your press pot made a very clean coffee. Yeah, it mm -hmm. surprises you, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> There's a little um, more of that spice that comes through, I think, with the, um, the Kalita. Mm-hmm. The Espro tames the acidity, and uh, there's less sparkle than there is in, in the pour-overs. Mm -hmm. um, but the oils are, are moving the flavors along. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good cup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are down to our last one. Yes. David's got the old stand by the Chemex. Chemex, I think, came out in 48, 1948, yes. which was a phenomenally good year. Yeah, the, the Chemex is uh, actually my favorite pour-over method. Um, uh, right now I'm using the square filters, and I'm using the natural filters, which I use at home. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of them. They are a little bit more environmentally friendly, um, but they do have a little more of the papery taste. Um, so my solution to that is really just give the filter a good wash. Um, but yeah, the filter's a little bit thicker. Um, it's a little bit longer of a brew time. Um, the thing I love about it is it is the one piece, so I can just uh, do my pour, wait for it to drain. It's good to go. Rinse it out. It's uh, I think it's a really awesome mm -hmm. home brew method, um, and I find it a little more approachable than the the V60 because the flavor profile. You still using two to one in your ratio? Um, for the bloom, or uh, no, or the, your weight. Uh, so the weight I'll do 16, 16 to one um, on the okay. on the ratio for uh, coffee to water or water to coffee, I should say. Um, I'm doing thirty eight grams, so I'm going to end up with approximately six hundred and forty grams. Uh, total brood. Um, is there some water there over there? I can steal from you. We have plenty of water. <laughs> For my own prep, uh, probably three days a week at home, I've got the glass handled Chemex and I've got the cone, K O N E, mm -hmm. um, the metal filter with a microscopic etched in holes. And so it's the Chemex brewer itself 
but the cone sits right in it. It's mm -hmm. a phenomenally good way to make coffee. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so, yeah, I'll let this bloom again for about 45 seconds or so. Usually that's where I notice the gases kind of stop rising out of there. Um, and for this, I use a little bit of a slower pour method than I do with the V60. Um, I find that um, you don't need as much of the agitation to uh, keep the, the fines where they need to be, on the, uh, especially with these filters. Um, and to me, I think aesthetically the Chemex looks the nicest, but that's, I is. think that's the least important mm -hmm. to my worries when I'm trying to make coffee. Yeah. But. Chemex is a, a, a pot that my wife doesn't mind that sits out on the counter yes. shelf. Yeah. It looks great in the kitchen. It does. I don't go with the wood, though. The wood drove me crazy in terms of washing it, so I ended up with a glass handle, mm -hmm. which I really like. Yeah. Brew time, David. Total brew time, I'm looking for about four and a half minutes or so. Um, and then again, that will vary based on the grind size, the amount of coffee I'm brewing as well. So I think this one will probably be a little bit longer. Um, I'm curious, you've, you've got two good shops. As people walk in now, what percentage of pour overs are you doing? What percentage of espresso? And what percentage of brewed coffee? I've always been curious. You know, it's interesting. I think there are certain times today we sell more of the brewed coffee. Uh, more and more as our name's getting out there, we're doing a little bit more uh, of the pour overs, which is really nice. Seven um, o'clock in the morning is probably a brewed cup. And yeah, milk. brewed cup, and they're getting out of there. Usually, you know, some bleary eyed people at, you know, 6 30 are getting uh, coffee and a shot of espresso. You got um, any bleary eyed baristas? Yeah, that's for sure, especially <laughs> when I'm getting there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'd say we do serve a lot of espresso as well. Um, I do like to see people come in and get a pour over and a shot of espresso. That's my personal favorite when I walk into a shop. Uh, do we have any more water over here? You need to put in a <laughs> plug for the coffees that they use at Clad as Coffee as well. They're locals. Um, Bootstrap Coffee, Micah's does a phenomenally good job with his coffee. Um, you use them in your shop. I've had them there, as well as Dogwood. Dogwood's a local roaster, mm. um, and Spy House. Those are probably my three local favorites. Awfully good shops that we've got in the Twin Cities. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Mike is a Mike is an awesome guy to work with. He's um, he's really committed. Uh, and he likes to check in with the shop in terms of what uh, the customers are thinking as well because he doesn't have his own shop. Like Dogwood's got their cafes, mm -hmm. um, which works really well for them because they can get some feedback on, you know, what's going well, what's not going well. Um, Micah really likes to communicate with us about um, kind of the same things. He likes mm -hmm. to uh, sit down in the shop, watch people order, uh, see us work as baristas as well, which... Um, I appreciate that he values that. Fresh well. pot if you need it there, David. Good. So I finished my pour about three minutes. I like to shoot between three minutes and eh, three and a half. Three and a half is a little long, but um, and then it'll take a little while for it to finish draining, especially with the amount of coffee. But um, um, I know it's premature. We still have the Chemex to cut. Mm -hmm. But what I find is the Espro is the most mellow of the four mm -hmm. cups that I've had. Um, it tames the acidity. Now. That wouldn't be my pleasure with this particular coffee, um, but there are some coffees, like a Kenyan uh, with the Espro, um, sometimes it'll take a, a Kenyan that's really unapproachable and tame mm -hmm. it down. Um, the two pour overs, the Hario and the Kalita, I think are accentuating this particular coffee the best. Mm -hmm. And that, that Kalita, uh, so far is my favorite. Yeah, perhaps I would yeah. have to agree actually. That's um, very similar to the V60, although there is a little bit more of that mm -hmm. um, acidity that I'm enjoying with the coffee. Um, a little bit more of like the of the orange. I can taste a little bit of the tart cranberry. Not, mm -hmm. you know, bitter, but a little tart. Um, mm -hmm. Tart sweetness. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And kind of a, a, an interesting spice kind of at the end there, I think. Yeah. Um, very good. So Your you thoughts? don't have to roast, you don't have to brew it perfectly. <laughs> You Correct. That's the weird thing. Time. Coffee, coffee's uh, a strange beast. One that yeah. I don't think ever can be fully tamed. But it's yeah, there's, you can screw up and still get a good cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that it's nice because I like the way that the Kalita finishes. It's just a little bit more of a syrupy body. Mm -hmm. um, really great sweetness. It's a cup that I could serve to someone that doesn't drink coffee, and I wouldn't be offended if they put cream or sugar in it but I would encourage them to try it first. Um, I think that they'd really dig this, the sweetness of it. Well, David's futzing with the Chemex. I thought I'd show some eye candy. 
This is an Alessi from the 1960s. This is mine. I bought this off my friends, Doug and Barb, at Orphan Espresso, and it's a mocha pot. Uh, it's a high eye candy, and oh, probably once a month I fool with Turkish. This is a 22 ounce Turkish. I can't convince my wife this is a good way to make coffee. <laughs> but it looks great. Yes, it does. It does. And I finished the brew timer out 4.45, which is Thank kind you. of right in that target zone. Um, so let's see. Hopefully I didn't screw it up too bad. And then we'll get an impression from everybody on what, what is which, or which mm -hmm. is what, with every cup. Yeah. Right off the bat, I noticed it's a little sweeter than the rest of them. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of first and foremost. Yeah. It's sweeter, but... Um, for me, the, the flavors are getting um, meld or compressed, mm -hmm. and, and there's less distinction. Yeah. And I think, I think that's uh, as large part, or in large result to the, the filters as well. I, I, my favorite coffees to drink out of the Chemex are the, the honey processed or the naturals, mm -hmm. um, because it kind of lets, kind of filters out some of those unsavory things you get with that mm -hmm. and lets the stronger flavors shine through. Yeah. Um, and you know, because all these are great for different different roasts mm -hmm. and different coffees as well. Um, so. David and I were talking about honey when I stopped into his shop a couple of Sundays ago. Um, Cafe Imports had a phenomenal Costa Rican honey, and I grabbed 84 pounds of it that disappeared <laughs> off our shelves very, very quickly. And a coffee like that would stand up in the Chemex as you brewed it, and in the press pot and the Espro very, very well. Yes. My opinion, out of these five approaches yeah. that we did today, with this particular coffee, um, it's the Kalita, mm -hmm. then the Hario, and then the other three I would yeah. put together. Mm -hmm. And that's just for this particular coffee. Thoughts? Yeah. I agree. Um, one of the things that I liked about the Chemex is it allowed some of the acidity to come through. Um, and it also, I'm getting a lot of the florals. So... It's very perfumey, very like delicate, nice coffee, which I wouldn't expect out of a Sulawesi usually. Um, so it provides a different insight into what is possible from this coffee. So mm -hmm. I, I think one of the good things about doing this kind of approach where you're slamming five together <laughs> is, is that you can see your cupping notes are going to differ from mine, mm -hmm. from Adrian's, from David's. Because depending on how we cup that coffee, um, the flavors and what we're getting out of it uh, differ from cup to cup to cup. Um, so I, I think it's a good experiment from that dimension. I think it's good to hear current barista thought, current um, coffee importer sales rep uh, comments on, on a, a coffee. Um, this has been the Sulawesi Pongo Pongo Coffee of the Month for November from millcityroasters.com. We've got the new 500 gram sample roaster on the website. We've got Espros on the website. I wanna thank David and Adrian for taking time with us, and it's a wrap. <laughs>